So this is the 16th of October 2023, John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. I'm at a petrol station here and um, I'm only here because of the light to record this. Today in the city there were a few of us around, uh, one group we came, ran into, I ran into, uh, giving out tracts, talking about Jesus. And it was good to see people who believe what you and I believe uh, about Jesus. So we had a, a chat with them, uh, giving out these leaflets, tracts, which are basically conversation pieces to talk to people about. Um, of course, the Jehovah Witnesses were there, with their stand, not giving out tracts so much as giving out free books, conversations with people, and the Mormons were there as well. So here we have um, mainstream true beliefs in Christ, known as Christianity. We have the Mormon version of Christianity, they're not Christian. We have the JW uh, version, the Jehovah Witness version of Christianity. They're not Christian either. So this is where the confusion is on this world, at this stage of life, 16th of October 2023. The world is very confused about who the real Christians are, and they tend to leave and avoid all of people claiming to be Christians, handing out Christian tracts. So the world generally sees the Mormons, the JWs and Christians, the mainstream Christians, as the same. And of course we're not. <clears throat> Born again Christians are set apart by the blood of the Lamb, by the grace of God, we are set apart from everybody else. Not that we are acting as a, an exclusive club, far from it, because we're the ones who are reaching out to those who are in other uh, groups. They are in a sort of a, a religious uh, club, a soul, soulish club, a social club based on their religion. And they're very much birds of a feather flocking together in their religious clubs and and that even affects denominationalism where if you're one type of Christian you tend to remain with that type of Christian in your local Christian denominational church that is the only form of Christianity you know but people on the streets who give out tracts <clears throat> they go to a Christian church quotes on a Sunday they have a Christian group but they know that the kingdom of heaven is not of this world so this is the background, this is the preamble. So I talked with, let's call them the proper Christians, with the proper gospel. There's real fellowship in the Holy Spirit with them because we're talking about the same Jesus Christ. But of course, when, uh, when I talk with the Jehovah Witnesses, there's no fellowship with the Holy Spirit because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Even though they think they do, they don't. Because if they had the Holy Spirit, he would move them to repent of their false doctrine, their false religion, and, and they would come out of Jehovah Witnessism. Same for the Mormons. So today I see four Mormons to begin with, and normally I would just leave them alone because I'm on my own. Trevor's not with me today, and... I, I'm very reluctant to get involved with with Mormons or any cult group on my own. They're not dangerous in that sense, but they they can um, they can claim it's like anti-religion, their religion. They can claim it's like religious phobia or whatever they call it. You know, they can claim that it's harassment harassing them in their religion with the truth 
But of course, I'm not promoting religion. I'm talking to them about the errors of their doctrine, their false doctrine and their wrong emphasis on certain scriptures. So today I looked at these young men, four young men with their black badges. And of course, we know it says the word elder. And I was going to leave them alone. But then I remembered that scripture that said an elder has to be a mature husband in Christ, a true disciple, a husband in Christ, a mature believer, a mature disciple of Christ, married to one wife who's brought their children up properly. So this is the biblical definition of elders, which we know are bishops in modern terms an elder is a true man of God a brother in Christ a husband in Christ has brought his children up properly but this is the 21st century and that type of true elder is few and far between but I took it to these young men and I took them that truth and I said did you know that in the Bible, the proper Christian Bible, not your Book of Mormon, but in the proper Christian Bible, it talks about true eldership and who a true elder is. And I told them what I've just told you. And of course, they didn't know this. They got a little bit defensive or greatly defensive and a bit aggressive. One person in particular who I call the strong man, just a young boy, but he was the most strongest under that religious spirit the strong man of the group, he became quite strong and aggressive. Where's that in the Bible? Where is it in the Bible? I said, well, you look it up. You've got the Bible, New King James Bible. Look it up. It's in the New Testament. Search the internet. Just put those key phrases in. I said, you know how to do it. You're young people. You can use the internet. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I said, okay, I'll leave it with you. You look it up. And off I went. And then half an hour later, I had some time, so I looked it up. Of course, it's 1 Timothy 3. 1 Timothy 3. It talks about elders. The definition I gave them. So I went back to see if they were there. And when I got back, half an hour later, there was two of them there in the same spot. So I walked up to the guy, and he's, he's the strong man. He was still there. And I said to him, it's, it's 1 Timothy 3. And he, he started to look it up on his phone. And then we got into the conversation about general things to do with Joseph Smith having been a Freemason. I gave a bit of my testimony. Another uh, four Mormons joined them, uh, plus two girls. So there were six young men, so-called elders, and two girls called sisters. And suddenly there was eight of them. So it was getting a bit difficult, a bit tense. And I said, I told them the truth. They'd never been taught what a true elder is in the body of Christ, the true church. It was time to finish. And I gave... I gave the boys a, a part of my testimony, the word of our testimony about Jesus Christ, about the blood of the Lamb, has power over Satan. And I, when I gave my testimony and I said, and then I was born again, one of the young men went, ah, right, I see, right, okay. And suddenly I was in a box called Born Again Christians, and these young Mormons are briefed that when you talk to people generally, you'll come across born-again Christians, they will try to convert you. They will try to lead you out of Mormonism. They will try to make all sorts of statements against our faith, our beliefs. And that, that was very apparent by his reaction, that he'd been warned about meeting people like me, born again. I'm a born-again Christian. And so that was more or less the end of the conversation. And I said to him, I said to them generally, I said, look, there are Mormons who've come out of Mormonism. 
if you search the internet and you put the phrase in ex Mormons for Christ you will find people who used to be Mormons like you are now they found out who Jesus Christ is the real Jesus and they've left Mormonism behind and you can search the internet ex Mormons for Christ and this young man said no we won't be doing that so there it is there is a clear distinction between those of us who are born of God born again Christians disciples of Christ born again we have a testimony once I was and and there are born-again Christians who were Mormons were Jehovah Witnesses they were Seventh-day Adventists they were Freemasons like I was and I, I reiterated to them Joseph Smith was a Freemason these were seeds of truth sown into their lives and we can only hope and pray that the enemy doesn't rob them of these truths because we are telling the truth about the real Jesus the truth the way the life and Jesus will set them free from every religious spirit including Mormonism if they will accept Christ as Lord and Savior if they will allow Jesus to bind the strong man the spirit behind that particular religion and all religions so we'll leave it there we'll just ask you to pray for us Trevor and I generally we don't engage with these religious cultic groups we leave them alone today was an opportunity to tell them 1 Timothy 3 about the true elders in the true church the body of Christ so with Trevor tomorrow God willing pray for us as we continue to reach out to whosoever wanting to speak the truth in love taking every opportunity to do good especially to the household of faith I want to encourage you to wherever you are seek out that brother or sister locally to you who knows what you know about the real Jesus Christ let the Lord lead you cafes are a good place to meet obviously churches church cafes are a good place to meet but we're not looking to promote Christianity so much as to discover who is open to the Holy Spirit who can join us to preach the gospel in our twos and threes to whosoever the fields are white unto harvest but the workers are few so we pray for you Lord to bring more and more workers onto the field or whichever field all the fields Lord in all the areas of life including people with mental health issues and addiction problems that they will discover that you Jesus are the truth the way the life and you are the power you have the power but you are the power who will set them free bind up the strong man clean out their houses get all the rubbish out of their lives and give them a brand new start for them to be born again and like babies craving milk growing up fast but mature in Jesus name God bless you brethren with one God keep, let's keep praying for one another Jesus is coming soon God bless you